Designed to bring a balance of performance and cost to gamers, the BG5 M.2 SSD from Kioxia is an obvious choice. The BG5 SSD utilizes Kioxia's fifth generation 112 layer BI-CS flash 3D memory and uses a DRAM-less architecture leveraging host memory buffer technology to maintain affordable power and efficiency. And for those needing a more robust storage and professional use, Kioxia CD7 features PCIe Gen 5 and 32 giga transfers per second, perfect for enterprise and data center solutions. To see the complete list of storage options from Kioxia, whether it be for everyday use in PC gaming or professional enterprise and data center solutions, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So yeah. This is our power color Red Devil 6900 XT, which admittedly has not had a lot of use. We did the review of it, we put it on the shelf, and the fans are slowing down because it went to Windows now even though we have no video. Um, and then recently when we Phil decided to put the 6900 XT in his system to see how it works because we like to use this stuff you know, over time. It's only been a few months. He's only had this for a few months, not that long. And today we came into work and he comes out to me and says, hey, uh, can I get a different graphics card to put in my system because I'm getting a no post and I'm getting video error. Actually on his, I believe it said something like load vBIOS or something like that. Yeah, and it was boot looping. Whereas mine's not even looping on this rig, it's just going to Windows. But anyway, I digress. What I told him was, fine, go ahead and change the card out, put a 3090 in there. And then I said, let me go test this card on the test bench. And then I get the same thing you're seeing right here, which is VGA error. So what's essentially happening here is the card during its post or power on self test is pinging all the hardware, like, hey, CPU, you there? Memory, are you there? Cool, you all talking? Cool, we're good. Okay, video, are you there? Video. Hey, hey. And what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to either stop at that state or try again. This one just says, F it, we'll do it live. If there's no graphics right now, according to the system, and it's in Windows right now, so let me go ahead and hit the power button so it can turn itself off. Yeah, yeah I feel like this is just 100% because of the fact that we talked about the fact that everything's been solid. I even mentioned that he was running a 6900 XT in his system and it's been fine. <sighs> this is a dual BIOS GPU. So I went, what happens if I switch the BIOS, right? So I'm gonna switch it over to silent, power it on, and unless this thing makes me a liar, see, it just turned white and it's already on, look at that. Display port, and we have video. So what essentially appears to have happened here is something has corrupted the EEPROM. So the, the BIOS is stored on an EEPROM, which is just, you know, it's a chip. And multiple uh, cards like this have multiple BIOS, have multiple chips. But this is why I preach all the time why dual BIOS is so worth it. Think of it as having two lives for your GPU in a sense. Because you just saw right now, I brought it back to life. Like if this was a single BIOS card right now, this thing is bricked. Completely bricked. The, the best case scenario you could possibly hope for is using a second GPU as a primary graphics adapter, putting this in a secondary slot, hoping that it's not borked to the point to where the OS doesn't even see it as a VGA adapter, and then you can load AMD, uh, AMD's vBIOS flash utility, which is very similar to NV flash, to then flash that drive while something else is actually pre presenting the image. That's also why iGPUs are also very handy as well in this particular situation. Intel CPUs and certain AMD APUs. So anyway, I'm not gonna show you a tutorial on how to do this, I've already done this video. In fact, I had to reference it because it's been so long since I've done this, I watched my own video to remember how to do this. But there are some tools you're gonna need. It's a uh, utility called AMD VB Flash for video BIOS. And you're gonna obviously need the BIOS. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm pulling up Tech Power Up GPU-Z and I am going to hit this little button right here which is save file. This is the BIOS that's currently loaded. Well, where I'm gonna save it is actually to where the program is that I have. So I've got the latest version. Now here's, a, here's an important thing. If you're using an older version of VB Flash or uh, AMD VB Flash than the card's generation, it won't work. So if you look at like, again, Tech Power Up has it, GPZ has it, or um, Guru3D has it all the reputable sites that are known for this sort of stuff. And we have to unlock the ROM. The ROM's technically locked first. So we have to do AMD VB flash dot exe dash unlock ROM zero. So that's just basically allowing you to put the RAM in, in or the EEPROM, it says ROM, right? Put the EEPROM ROM into an unlock state where it allow itself to be overridden. Now here's the thing. If I flash it right now, it's just gonna flash that. So here's the part a lot of people don't realize. 
you can flip the BIOS switch while it's booted. Once the, the ROM has been loaded, it doesn't do anything with that again. It loads it and then that's it. You can switch that switch back and forth and nothing will happen. It will continue to use whatever ROM was loaded at the time the PC was initialized. So now what I can do is if I go to flash it, actually, you know what, well, here's what we'll do. We'll make this even, we'll make this more, even more interesting. I'm not gonna use the utility there. I'm gonna use the actual GUI because it does have a GUI. I'm just old school, I like to use command prompt, but it does have this GUI that makes it interesting. So if I go ahead and say right now, load image, Silent ROM OEM, and I'm gonna make sure I'm still on the silent BIOS, okay? If I hit low, uh, program, watch what it's gonna say. The version of BIOS is already installed. So it's just like, bro, what are you doing? The sad part about that is if you're having weird BIOS issues or something and you want to just override it, you can't, you'd have to do it the way I was gonna show you on command prompt. So I decided instead of trying to load the silent BIOS on there, I just downloaded from Tech Power Up the official BIOS for it. Um, there's like seven different BIOS for the Red Devil. There's the Ultimate, there's the Liquid Devil, there's all that. So I made sure by going into GPU-Z that the actual ROM was the same number. So I downloaded that and I renamed it to OCOEM right there. So now I'm gonna do load image and I'm gonna do OEM, OCOEM and program. So we are in the, I'm glad I double checked that we are in the OC BIOS. So otherwise I'll be flashing the OC on the silent, but you can see it's actually flashing now. So if the ROM matches, it won't override, which is the downside of this particular piece of program with the GUI anyway, is there might even be an option in there to override there. The BIOS was programmed successfully. So now what I'm curious about is if this will boot. I'm gonna do a full shutdown. I don't want to do a restart. I'm just gonna do a shutdown and then we'll see. Now, if this doesn't work, that means something other than the BIOS is what's causing the, v, the VBIOS or EVGA error, or EVGA, VGA error, such a shill, I know. Yeah, it's still hanging on a red light for VGA. This is one of those things now where I, it's possible that that EEPROM itself has failed in some way, because that's the only thing different. The only thing different between, watch, flipping that BIOS switch and then hitting reset the only thing that's changed here is the BIOS. So that tells me that that EEPROM might have failed in some way. It still works enough to be able to be written, but it's failed in the sense that, see, there we go. It's failed in the sense that it's not initializing the GPU. Now we, there's some precursor to this. We, we were starting to think something was weird with this card just the last couple of days. In downtime, we like to play Rocket League around here. We just like to throw, three or four matches in there and then, you know, trash talk. And usually Phil beats the crap out of Nick and I, but that's fine. He started noticing his FPS was all over the place. By all over the, all over the place, we mean, what, it went as low as like, what, 30 FPS at like one 30, point? 40-ish, yeah. Yeah, I looked over and I was like, what is happening to your system? And then he went in there and, and was messing with the settings and it would like work fine. And then he would restart the game or come in the next day and it'd be all trash again. So then he reinstalled the driver. No, the driver uninstalled itself. Oh, that's right. The driver did uninstall itself. I forgot about that. You went in there and you right clicked and you were like AMD utility, like the graphics, the Radeon stuff was gone, just completely gone. So you suddenly ended up on just a basic VGA driver from like Microsoft. And then you reinstalled the driver and then you still were having some weird issues after that. Uh, all the way up to the point to where we left yesterday. We were playing, everything was fine. He came in this morning and this is what he was experiencing. So at some point between when we left yesterday and we came in this morning, it just died. I honestly believe that that particular chip failed, has failed in the card. And now that's unfortunate because, well, what does this card cost? I'm curious. Current pricing, the non-ultimate on Amazon is 1,049. That's actually, 999 was the MSRP for this card. So not this card, but just to, that's actually pretty good. They're ranging all over the place as you would expect. So everywhere from 1500 to $1,600. So that's a lot of money for a graphics card that just suddenly now lost one of its two lives. <laughs> Let's just say it doesn't instill confidence in trying to continue to use this card. What I'm probably gonna do right now is flash the uh, OC BIOS onto the silent BIOS. That way we at least get that, that fan curve and stuff back. Yeah, I think if there's anything you're gonna take away from this video. So it should be how beneficial dual BIOS, both motherboards for CPUs and graphics cards are. In fact, there's even some graphics cards that have triple BIOS and some motherboards that have triple BIOS. So it allows you to not only just tinker around with stuff, but it also allows you to be able to get back up and running if you need it. So 
Yeah, it's unfortunate that the most flagship of AMD cards that we have uh, took a dump on us. The irony is that I tried to kill our 3090 during that whole like new world thing and we couldn't, but without doing anything, one half of our 6900 XT took a, took a crap. And we, Phil actually liked this card. He did like this card. I mean, he missed the specific RTX level, I think he missed the particular RTX level performance in games like Control and other games. But uh, one of the weird indicators that we had too yesterday was he loaded up No Man's Sky when it was load initializing shaders, which already is choppy when the game starts, but it, can, it persisted for a long time. So that could be because of the fact it was the first time loading the game with this card. Hindsight tells us this was happening because Phil was just like, what is happening with my computer? It was like IGPU frame rates for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was really bad. All right, guys. Do you have a suggestion on what we could do to bring this card back? I have no way of actually troubleshooting what the issue is if I can't get it to post. You know, if I can get it, if I can switch the BIOS, that means everything else physical wise on the card is fine power traces, power delivery, the GPU itself, the memory, all that stuff is clearly working. One of the things I didn't show you guys yet, I guess, is the fact that it does boost up and load just fine uh, in that particular BIOS. I would have loved to have gotten it to boot on the other BIOS to show you, but I mean, 150, 160 FPS right there in 1440p heaven, everything maxed out. So it's absolutely fine in that. So I just, I. I do know BIOS chips can fail, and I think that's what's happened with this one. And that is not a serviceable part. I mean, if you sent it to them, they could potentially RMA it and replace that particular BIOS chip, but at least we're up and running with a separate BIOS. What do you guys think we should do with this card? Don't say giveaway. I would not give this away. I can't trust it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.